Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More. I specialize in vintage vacuum tubes and have a little Wii online store. And today we're going to talk about what to do with bent pins and trickier still octal tubes that have the guide pin broken right off. So let's do something easy. Everyone who's into vacuum tubes in a serious way, especially vintage tubes, needs a pin straightener. This is a beautiful one from CBS Hytron and I don't know what I'd do without it. I certainly would never take it on the road with me. So here we are with a pin straightener and a really bent pin like this. There's just no way to get it in there. So the thing to do is to have a really good set of needle nose pliers and very carefully and gently get in there and just get the bent pins close to where they should be. Look at it from different angles. Make sure that everybody is sort of lined up. And then get the pin straightener out. Gently put it on there and then do it again. Have a look and make sure that that bent pin is nice and straight. Should be perfect. That's easy peasy. You can do the whole job with pliers. If you have a bend in the middle, work on the middle only. Don't work on the end. If it's on the end, work on the, the full pin. And just take your time and look at it from various angles to see how you're doing. And if you don't have a pin straightener, a really nice set of needle nose pliers. It's slower, but you'll get the job done. Okay, so that's a little signal tube. Here's a really ugly looking tube. Um, I think it is a... Is it a 6L6? I'm not sure what it is. It's painted black. It might be a 6B6. It's hard to see. It's actually painted outside of the factory. It's a custom job, folks. What do you think? Anyways, octal tubes rarely have bent pins, but when they do, the same thing applies. Get in here with the pliers and very carefully just straighten it out. I've never seen a pin straightener for an octal tube, so it's always needle nose pliers all the way. Oh, there's a bent pin. Look at that. Everybody see that? So, just ease it back into spot. Don't force it and find out where the bend is and locate the pliers carefully so that you get better to go a little slow and then come back and do a little bit more than go too far because you don't want to go back and forth. These pins are, they look like they're silver but in fact they're tinned brass and brass is good for conductivity but it also has a certain amount of brittleness. So back and forth, it'll break eventually. Okay, so setting all that aside, what to do when the guide pin is broken on an octal? That's a big thing. It happens. I'm not sure why. Sometimes I get quite a few in with broken guides. The last thing in the world you want to do is to accidentally put the tube in the wrong position and turn on the amp. That's a very bad thing to do. Electrically, this tube has to go in exactly the way it was meant to. Now, you can see here, this is really kind of neat, you can see the end of the glass tube here, and that's where the vacuum will have been taken out, or the tube would have been vacated, and then molten glass would have closed off. There would have been a little straw-like attachment here. Let's see if I've got a little something. Well, this is some really nice heat shrink, but that's what the tube would have looked like and it would have had a vacuum pump at the far end here and presto finito out comes the air so um, we can't do anything about the covering there's no easy way to to break off some old guides and crazy glue them back on but what we can do is mark the body of the tube so this is a beautiful tube, well worth saving. It's a Jan 6L6 WGB Phillips, made in 
made in the USA. Um, it's going to be a really good sounding tube and I've got a, hopefully a match pair. I haven't tested them yet. They came in from Peter who's a reputable bulk tube reseller I buy from quite often and the um, the thing is we've got to get these things so that they're presentable for sale. Some people won't buy a broken pin but let's face facts there's only going to be so many of these tubes in existence and if you want one you may have to buy a set one with damage. So the way to go about it is to find a matching tube. That's the easiest thing to locate where the guide pin goes. And it just so happens I bought a pair. So what we're going to do here or a tube that's similar. Same manufacturer, similar base That'll, that'll get you, so long as you look at the plate structure, electrically underneath, get everything lined up. You don't have to have a, another guide pin, but another tube is essential. Everything lined up, you can see how the shield on the heater at the top is in the same direction. Get everything lined up. Sometimes the pin numbers are on the base, in this case they're not. But here you can see we've got four pins on the bottom, two on the top. And the guide, this little knob here, is facing right here to the left, my left, your right, I guess, of the pair. That's this spot right here. So, what I do is I make a little form, not very wide, just with some masking tape. I want a very small mark. I don't want to make the tube look ugly. It's already feeling, you know, hurt that it's somebody broke off its pins. Just a little tiny spot down there. Just a little key way. Just a little key in. There you go. There you go. Okay. Then a little white out. These days, you can get this at dollar stores for, well, for a buck. You need a good shake, though. Maybe I could have done that off camera, but, oh, I don't know if you can hear Wee Jordy. He's my mom's Yorkie Terrier. And he defends the house while I'm doing videos. So he's here for a week over Thanksgiving while my parents are away. So do this quickly and that's it. Don't fiddle around in there. More damage was done trying to fix stuff by fiddling than by anything else. Okay, so take your little bit of pattern off. Boom. Get that in the garbage before you get a muck. Don't touch it. Don't try to improve upon it. That's it. That's our that's our guide pin all laid out. That's the best method I've come up with so far. And the best thing is that if somebody really hates that mark, you can actually pick that off with a sharp fingernail. It'll come off. It won't damage the tube. And now you just have to be careful when you load this tube into your socket that you just line it up and with all that glass exposed you want to line it up on the mark on the key of the socket and just push it straight in. Okay so if you watched the whole video how about a little reward. Here's a nice little discount for the store. There we go and feel free to use those discount codes as often as you like. That's Jim from Valsamore signing off.